Hey guys, Rexazor here, and welcome back to the third episode of the Total War Warhammer kind of lore overview, where in this episode we'll be looking at dwarves and everything dwarven. Um, if you haven't checked the first two episodes, which tell you all about Warhammer and the Empire, then check those out as well. So the dwarves. Now the dwarves are based around in the mountains around the Empire, and they've been there for a very long time. In fact, historically speaking, the Dwarves are one of the oldest empires and oldest factions in uh, the Warhammer universe, after the Elves, Elves being the oldest, Dwarves being the second oldest kind of thing. And they used to actually span all the way over the mountain ranges, so they span basically from the northern uh, most peaks of the mountains, near the Chaos Waste, all the way down to a Central Africa kind of region, which isn't actually called Africa because that would be copyright kind of thing. Um, but anyway, so they had a massive empire, very big. And then came things like the Orcs and the Skaven and other things like Ogre Kingdoms, like little factions, but because of the amount, they sort of broke apart. Then the empire kind of formed during that time and the Dwarves and the empire sort of go along really well. Uh, due to Sigmar, actually, mostly because Sigmar was such a cool guy. And they defended things against dwarf, uh, or, uh, the Chaos Invasions and then Orc Invasions, and they've been close allies ever since. So we can expect in Total War Warhammer that these two will start off probably allies in the beginning of the game, or there might be some tensions, and, you know, being Total War, they will go to war eventually, because, of course, that's how Total War works. Um, but, yeah, so the way that dwarves work, they're, they're very small clans, um, especially now they're not really a massive faction, they're kind of small faction, where well, they have clans and each clan has a thane which is like a noble um, and then above that you have their king of the clans um, but it depends really on, on the clans themselves because some of the clans are um, banished, some of them are weaker these guys don't have kings and in the hierarchy of the clans you have some kings and then right at the top you have the high king of all the dwarves which at this moment is High King Thogrin Grudge Bearer. Here's a little picture of him on his uh, little uh, dais uh, with his book of grudges. Now, um, the way that dwarves work is... Um, well, they're, they're a very kind of... Uh, not military kind of thing, but they, they basically... Unlike the Empire, they rule over themselves in a more kind of uh, hierarchy kind of fashion. They're not even... Um, like the Empire, you have uh, the Elector Council, like each other. This is literally a focus of strength and wealth. Um, but yeah, so that's a bit overview of the of the Dwarves. They also, they live inside the mountains, so they have big, think like uh, in Lord of the Rings, you have the Mines of Moria, um, and you see uh, the big, um, like, halls, Khazad Doom kind of thing. It's very similar. Um, in this case, the Dwarves live all over the mountain ranges and although a lot of their uh, holds have been shattered and invaded by uh, orcs, goblins, skaven kind of thing, um, the dwarves in this case have only a few holdings left but they're still quite impressive holdings things especially the main one uh, being uh, Karaza Karak which is in the center of uh, the mountain ranges and it's the biggest holding that they have and it's like the most impressive. Um, now Dwarf units, because I know that's probably what most of you really want to know about. <laughs> the dwarf units are um, very mixed kind of thing. They are they have a lot of combaty troops, but they're mostly range kind of thing. Uh, they prefer going around uh, with guns, cannons. Uh, they actually have bolt throwers. They have contraptions, which are very strange. Things like gyrocopters, which are basically just helicopters with mini cannons on them. Um, they have gunners, but they also do have a lot of powerful melee units especially one of the like my favorite units with the dwarfs are the slayers now there are several different layers layers of slayers wow hierarchy of slayers you have the normal slayers you have things like uh, troll slayers giant slayers and then at the top you have dragon slayers now um like it, it all depends on what they've killed and stuff and to become a dragon slayer you used to have to kill a dragon basically kind of uh, ordeal, but they're really, really powerful units, and I'm expecting them to be equivalent to, uh, say, a Berserker unit in the original Total War, uh, Rome Total War, um, like the Germanic um, Berserkers in the kind of way it's going to be a small unit with really powerful troops. Um, but that's pretty much uh, the Dwarf unit roster, so it's going to be a lot of things like um, ranged units, along with some very powerful melee units. So they do have things like um, the Miners, which are basically um, 
people who wield pickaxes, but the thing is, in the tabletop, the pickaxes count as what's called a great weapon, which gives you a hell of a lot more um, attack power, but it means you're slower in combat, so, you know, it's that kind of dealio. Um, but the dwarves also use a very strange kind of magic. Now, I told you back during the Empire video that magic is kind of has very different rules depending on what faction it is, and that the Empire were very by the book. Well, the dwarves don't use magic as such, they use something called runes. And they have people called the Rune Masters, who uh, basically deal with that. And they, the dwarves, I don't know, I can't actually remember why they don't use magic. I think it's because they're either not able to, or they see it as a breach of some kind of dwarven thing. Um, but basically they use runes. So runes are infused with magical energy, and to, you, to basically cast a rune, you have to um, shatter it against an anvil or just like that, I don't know. And um, these cause magical effects. Most of them are going to be buffs uh, or nerfs on the enemy. So buffs to you, nerfs to the enemy kind of thing. Uh, very rarely some direct damage, which is going to be kind of interesting to see because uh, the abilities of, say, the wizards uh, for the Empire are going to be very offensive as well as defensive. But it's going to be a lot of you know, throwing fireballs at the enemy, lightning from the heavens kind of thing. Well, the door's going to be a lot of buffing this, buffing that, you know, nerfing this, making it slightly slower kind of thing. Which is going to be very interesting to see. Um, and I think it's going to be one of the most defining characteristics of the dwarves compared to the other races, since the other races have very offensive magic, whilst the dwarf is more of a defensive kind of magic. Um, the dwarves actually are going to be interesting also because of the high amount of cannons that they wield and contraptions they wield and the fact that um, compared to like say the other factions who have things like flying creatures um, like wyverns or dragons or griffins pegasus these only really have gyrocopters <laughs> so it's going to be like battle for the air oh crap we got nothing kind of thing um, but I wouldn't underestimate the or the dwarves sorry the dwarves are very hardy um, obviously when you think of dwarves it's basically exactly what you would think of a dwarf very hardy very stout uh, really really powerful and look badass as fuck with all their cannons um, they have massive axes they they work really well together and you could think the orc the dwarves as having a massive battle line kind of thing and they sort of wait for the enemy to come to you so basically just a pre-napoleonic kind of army like a, not as I don't know on the same level I would say as um, the Empire except that the dwarves will have no cavalry at all um, dwarves can't ride horses, obviously, horses on the ground, who's ever heard of that kind of deal? Um, but yeah, so dwarves don't really use horses, but yeah, that's basically all about the dwarves. So um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching this about the dwarves. I hope that this has sort of piqued your interest about the dwarves, because they are going to be an interesting race to play, and especially their starting locations, and uh, the way of which Create Assembly is going to make it so that, you know, is there going to be underground battles inside mountain passes kind of thing, or is it just going to be all overground? Um, especially their starting location because they're going to be basically surrounded by orcs on one side uh, whilst the empire is going to be basically like be buffered by the dwarves and um, and also how the runes are going to work because runes are very different to how magic works and um, unlike magic which is affected by other things like the winds of magic runes aren't so it's going to be very interesting to see how this all works out and um, I'll explain more about magic in a future video. Next video is going to be all about orcs and goblins. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you next time.